This will come as quite a shock to my crewmates. And to NASA. And to the entire world. But I'm still alive. Hey, Space.com, real treat for you. I'm standing here on Mars with the Martian behind the Martian. This is Andy Weir, who wrote the book, The Martian, on which the film is based. Andy, what's up with you? Why are you trying to kill that guy on Mars? <laughs> well, I'm just not a very nice guy, and I'm mean to my protagonist. <laughs> But you do it in some really torturous ways. Well, it's really Mars doing it. I mean, these are just the realities of interplanetary travel and exploration. It is really, really hard and extraordinarily dangerous. And we've got a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of things that we need to solve before we make it happen in the real world. So did you write this with Murphy looking over your shoulder saying, I'm going to make this guy go through everything that can possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, there's, there's one thing that does go very wrong for him that sets up the plot initially. He gets stranded there. But from there, most of his problems are, it's just this long cascade failure. It's, um, most of his problems are caused by the solutions to his previous problems, that sort of thing. So because the book deal and the movie deal happened very close together, a lot of us didn't read the book until we knew that Matt Damon was cast as your Watney. Works for me. Does he Whatever gets you reading the book. Yeah, well, what do you think? What do you think oh. of what you've seen of his portrayal so He far? absolutely nails the character. He does perfectly. I saw the whole film um, a few days ago, and he just absolutely does a perfect job. He's in exactly how I imagined Watney. I'm really, really happy. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So as you were writing it, you went through a bit of an iterative process. You know, you put mm -hmm. it out there and then you got from some feedback from the community a little bit later in the game. That's kind of like what Watney goes through on Mars. He solves a lot of stuff for himself and then starts to hear from NASA, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. What about that parallelism? Does that work for you? I never really thought of it before. Uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's not like I was in a life or death struggle. I was just, you know, writing a book as a hobbyist, so it's not exactly the same, but uh, I see what you're saying. It's, it's an interesting parallel. I never thought of it. As, a, as an engineer and someone who follows this, what's the real reason to put humans on Mars? Well, really, really. Uh, I'm just um, offering my own opinion here. Yeah. I think it's important that, that humans establish a um, self-sufficient human population somewhere other than Earth. So it could be the moon, could be Mars, could be whatever. Right. It could be just in solar orbit, but somewhere other than Earth. And that way it, it brings our chances of extinction down to basically zero. While, but while the entire human race is still on one planet, we're, we still have a, a kind of non-zero chance of extinction. Okay, so let me take you a little further into that. Okay. Which should we do first? Should we do a big planet like Mars? Should we try and make it work on the moon? Should we do colonies in uh, cislunar orbit, which might be okay. easier because you're not down in a gravity well? What do you think? So I personally believe that the easiest, the easiest and safest way to make a colony would be the moon because you can still be partially Earth dependent mm -hmm. for general operations, but you're safe from anything that happens to or on Earth. Um, but that is independent of exploring the solar system. There will be people on Mars. We will have visited Mars before we colonize the moon. That's, my, that's what and I have to say. your gut for a timeline for this? And NASA says they can do it by 2035, and I'm sure they could given, the fun, given enough funding, but I don't have faith in Congress to give them enough money to, to make that happen. So I'm being a little more conservative going 2050. And very last quick question along those lines. What are the chances that by the time NASA gets to Mars, Elon Musk and Robert Bigelow will be sitting there waving to them saying, come to my hotel? Pretty much zero. I think the first manned mission to Mars will be a large international effort like ISS, that sort of thing. And I believe that those companies like SpaceX and Boeing, and they will be instrumental, but they'll be contracted by the government. Like, so it'll be like NASA is buying 14 SpaceX launches to put up you know, the parts of a big space station that gets assembled and then sent toward Mars. So everyone will play a part, but I don't think private industry could possibly beat governments there. And now that you've met the author, I urge you to read the book before you see the movie. You'll just enjoy it that much more. For Space.com, I'm Dave Brody. Space.com.